Now let's concentrate. Have you been trailing Firefly? <laughs> Have we been trailing Firefly? Why, my partner, he's got a nose just like a bloodhound. Really? Yeah, and the rest of his face don't look so good either. Look, we find out all about this, Firefly. Here, look at this. Ah, oh, very good, very good. Wait a minute. We must not be disturbed. Ah, 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 ah. And now, gentlemen, please, will you tell me what you found out about Firefly? Well, you remember you gave us a picture of this man and said, follow him? Oh, yes. Well, we get on the job right away. And in the one hour, even in less than one hour, yes? we lose the picture. That's a pretty quick wait, eh? But I asked you to dig up something I can use against Firefly. Did you bring me his record? Now, Ciccolini, I want a full, detailed report of your investigation. All right, I tell you. Monday, we watch the Firefly's house, but he no come out. He wasn't home. Tuesday, we go to the ball game, but he fool us. He no show up. Wednesday, he go to the ball game, or we fool him. We no show up. Thursday was a doubleheader. Nobody show up. Friday, it rained all day. There was no ball game. So we stayed home. We listened to her over the radio. Then you didn't shadow Firefly. Oh, sure, we shadow Fire. We shadow him all day. But what day was that? Saturday. <laughs> it's some joke, eh, boss? Now, will you tell me what happened on Saturday? I'm glad you asked me. We follow this man down to a roadhouse. And at this roadhouse, he meet a married lady. A married lady? Yeah, I think it was his wife. Firefly has no wife? No. No. Then you know what I think, boss? What? I think we followed the wrong man. Oh, gentlemen, I am disappointed. Speak up, prisoner. The judge is deaf. Your name? Your age? Your profession? Have you... Have you... Got all the prisoner's answers down? <laughs> You are accused of disturbing the peace, abducting a woman, and resisting the king's guard. What is your defense? Quick, and to the point. Casimodo! So you plead guilty. Twenty-five next month. For that, you shall be whipped. Bell ringer at Notre Dame! <laughs> your Honor. The prisoner is dead. He hears nothing. Yeah. That's different. For that insolence, you shall spend another hour on the pillory. Next case. Paso, first and first. Ah, ah. This is the moment you've awaited, Miss Fellows. That will be my esteemed, but not by me, employer. I will now demonstrate to you how a man of integrity brings an almost uh, insoluble situation to a triumphant conclusion. The Reverend T. Lawrence Shannon speaking. Well, Mr. Blake, how are you? Nice of you to call. Wish you were down here with us. The air is like spring wine down here at this time of year. What do you mean, am I on the source? You know me better than that, Mr. Blake. I don't care what any judge in Corpus Christi says. You know and I know that I'm a regularly ordained minister of the gospel. Now, wait a minute, you big fat zero. Let me tell you something. A tour conductor is like the captain of a ship. Once the bus leaves the terminal, he is in sole command. And uh, let me assure you that Shannon runs a taut bus. A very taut bus. I've taken it past deadly shoals and all the perils of the deep, figuratively speaking, of course. And I remain in command. I have here in my pocket the symbol of my command, right here in my pocket. You cannot fire a man who has the distributor head. Shannon can fire Blake's tours, but Blake's tours cannot fire Shannon. This tour will end in peace and unity. Shannon will emerge triumphant. <laughs> Montag. I knew it. I knew it. Of course, all this... The existence of a secret library was known in high places. But there's no way of getting at it. Only once before have I seen so many books in one place. Now, I was just an ordinary fireman at the time. I wasn't even qualified to use the flamethrower. 
It's all ours, Montag. Listen to me, Montag. Once to each father, at least once in his career, he just itches to know what these books are all about. He just aches to know, isn't that so? Well, take my word for it, Montag. There's nothing there. The books have nothing to say. Look, these are all novels. All about people that never existed. The people that read them and make them unhappy with their own lives, makes them want to live in other ways, they can never really be. What's happening? This house is condemned. They're said to burn the books right here with everything else. Oh, well, burning the house is one thing. Burning the books is another, isn't it? It's never any good burning everything together. Go on, Montag. All this philosophy. Let's get rid of it. It's even worse than the novels. Thinkers, philosophers, all of them saying exactly the same thing, only I am right. The others are all idiots. One century they, they tell you man's destiny is predetermined. The next they say that he has freedom of choice. Now, it's just a matter of fashion, that's all, philosophy. Just like short dresses this year, long dresses next year. Look. All stories of the day. Biography, that's called. An autobiography. My life, my diary, my memoirs, my intimate memoirs. Of course, when they started out, well, it was just the urge to write. Then after the second or third book, all they wanted was to satisfy their own vanity, to stand out from the crowd, to be different, to be able to look down on all the others. Ah, critics' prize. Ah, this is a good one. Of course, he had the, the critics on his side. Lucky fellow. <laughs> Just tell me this, Montag. At a guess, how many literary awards would you say were made in this country on an average each year? Five, ten, forty? Hmm? No less than 1,200. I, anybody that put pen to paper was bound to win some prize someday. Ah, Robinson Crusoe. The Negroes didn't like that because of his man, Friday. And Nietzsche. Ah, Nietzsche. The Jews didn't like Nietzsche. Ah, here's a book about lung cancer. You see, all the cigarette smokers got into a panic, so for everybody's peace of mind, we burn it. Ah, now this one must be very profound. The Ethics of Aristotle. Now, anybody that read that must believe he's a cut above anybody that hadn't. You see, it's, it's no good, Montag. We've all got to be alike. The only way to be happy is for everyone to be made equal. So, we must burn the books, Montag. All the books. Sir? Yes, what's the matter? Trouble with the old lady downstairs. Oh, just a moment, Doctor. I haven't much time. Matter of fact, I haven't much time myself. Dr. Parson tells me you're a great hunter. Well, you could hardly expect me to enter your office eating a pack of hounds. I understand you don't like to talk about your health. That's right. Any particular reason why? It's just a boring subject, that's all. Oh, most people love it. I make my living by listening to them. Then I'm afraid you're wasting your time. I'll send you a bill. I'm 23 years old. An only child. I weigh 110 pounds stripped. I've had measles, mumps, and whooping cough all at the proper ages. I believe I have no congenital weaknesses. Shall I go on? Yes, please. My father drank himself to death. My mother lives in Paris. I take a great deal of exercise. I'm accustomed to a reasonable quantity of tobacco and alcohol. I'm said to have a sense of humor. Is that enough? All the inconsequential facts. Thank you. What are the consequential ones? Does that light bother you? Not at all. Do you use your eyes a great deal? I generally keep them open, Doctor. What do you do with yourself down there in Long Island? Oh, horses, dogs, shooting, yachting. Travel, parties, gossip. All the pleasures of the station wagon crowd. You don't think much of that, do you? No, not much. Why not? It just doesn't appeal to me, that's all. Do you condemn everything that doesn't appeal to you? Oh, by no means. You asked for my opinion, I gave it. Well, anyway, that's my racket. What's yours? Mine? No. Brain surgery, large practice, about ten days off every summer. Sounds awful. It is. Then why do you do it? Because, like yourself, I've been caught in a racket. Oh, doctor... 
What a relief to know that you're no better than I am. Ah, but you see, I'm clearing out of my racket. I'm leaving for Vermont in about uh, 50 minutes. Vermont? You don't mean that narrow, pinched up little state on the wrong side of Boston? That's the one. No kidding? No kidding. What are you going to do there between yawns? Ah, uh, you wouldn't be interested. Oh, come now, Doctor, after leading me on like this. Well, I'm going to do scientific research on the growth of cells. In little guinea pigs? No, just cells. Sounds silly. So I'm told. Still, I almost envy you. Must be nice to believe in what you're doing. Don't you? Not in the way you do. Oh, I'm not complaining. Take it all in all, they've dealt me a very good hand. I'm young, I have no particular responsibilities. I don't intend to cultivate any either. Once free or without. I shall probably marry someday, no hurry about that. When I do, I shall build a house on a ridge I know with a glorious view. I have my horses. And even luck, I'll have about 40 years of that. I think that's a pretty good setup. What did you do yesterday? I played bridge in the afternoon. I went to the theater in the evening. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. suit you better. What do you think, Marilyn? Hmm? You weren't even listening. I'm sorry, Mother. I don't understand you, darling. Most girls your age are thrilled to death when it comes time to pick a pattern. You haven't even looked at the ones the Bureau sent over. Oh, I looked at them. I remember how excited I was before I was done. I couldn't sleep for nights. I finally chose number 12. I guess that's everybody's favorite. Aren't you excited? Marilyn, what are you looking at, dear? You. Picture of you before. Oh, dear. It is you, isn't it? Yes, that's me. Before my transformation. <laughs> I was a sight, wasn't I? Mother, I think you were beautiful. Well, I certainly don't. Am I very homely now? No, darling. Not to me. But afterwards, you'll be beautiful. Mother, if I didn't want the transformation, I wouldn't have to have it, would I? Darling, what are you talking about? The transformation is the most marvelous thing that could happen to a person. Well, I could wait a little while, couldn't I? Don't worry, darling. You're just nervous. What you need is a glass of instant smile. Just think. Very soon now, you can look like that. Won't that be wonderful? 